So, my pleasure, my pleasure. We found our second plenary lecture and our friend, Francesco De Lisola from R R R Rome, uh, University of Sapienza. Sapienza, my friend, is it way? Sapienza? Yeah. University Sapienza. of Rome. And Francesca, uh, we are lucky we have him. Uh, we had him at previous conferences and we have him now. And I, I, I believe that our collaboration has a good future. Francesca, please start. You talk. Uh, our collaboration will have a, a good future, inshallah, because these problems we are having uh, could be a big trouble. Okay, uh, so I, first of all, I really apologize. Uh, you know, Europe has a unique time, so I lost the capacity of calculating the jet lag differences. So I don't know why I was sure that it was in two hours, in, in one hour. So the difference was two hours. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, everybody in St. Petersburg for inviting me uh, systematically uh, every year at this conference. It is a great pleasure to uh, participate. Uh, of course, it is a pity that uh, this time I could not enjoy the restaurants and the city, but hopefully we will do this uh, next year. Uh, today I want to tell about uh, the last results of my group in Metamaterials, uh, and I will stress some aspects. Uh, I don't know if uh, we have here also our friend uh, Alexander Porubov. Uh, um, he inspired me some considerations in our last discussion in St. Petersburg, and I will try to tell you uh, in which sense um, the, the, this uh, scientific interaction was useful and uh, gave me some ideas. So, uh, the subject is synthesis of complete second gradient architectured metamaterials. So let me tell a few things about these words. Synthesis means to design the microstructure of a material given the uh, behavior, assigned the behavior of the material uh, we prefer. So the point of view, uh, usual point of view is changed in the sense that usually you have a mechanical system and this mechanical system you want to describe with a mathematical model in this case we have a mathematical model and we look for the microstructure the physical system uh, which is uh, governed by the chosen uh, uh, equations by the chosen mathematical model so this is uh, what in uh, some uh, scientific groups is called synthesis uh, of a material. Now, second gradient uh, materials are material whose deformation energy depends on the second gradient of displacement. There was a big debate about this point. I will uh, refer about this debate later. Metamaterial is are materials whose behavior is chosen a priori, so tailored materials, materials which are not existing before a mathematician decided to design them. And architecture refers to the microstructure which uh, um, is constituted, constituting the synthesized metamaterial. Okay, so this for explaining a little bit the title. Ah, by the way, uh, as uh, I gave many 90 hours of lectures in this distance configuration, please uh, interrupt me sometimes because I feel a little bit stupid talking in the empty with all your microphones switched off without seeing your faces. You know, I, it could be as if I were a crazy man talking to nobody in the, in the end. Okay. Now, Francesca, I'm hearing you, I'm here. 
Uh, okay. So thanks, Alexander. So if you feel to uh, interrupt me, please do it. So we have a, a, an appearance of uh, discussion. Okay. Then uh, I want to talk about micro, micro, micro to macro approaches because from the micro level where the architecture has been expressed, we want to reach the macro level where the behavior is uh, designed, desired, okay? Of course, we have terribly non-linear problems, so we cannot solve uh, any of these mathematical problems uh, with closed form solutions, or it is rather seldom we can do it. Uh, and uh, so we need a lot of numerical investigations. How to build these materials? with additive manufacturing. This was a miracle of recent advances in technology. And all these dreams we had with mathematics uh, are uh, validated with experimental uh, validations. So I already said something about this slide. I will try to uh, go quickly. So what we want, we want to respond to the demand of materials with improved and exotic macro scale properties. Uh, I think I already said in St. Petersburg that uh, I am a bionic man. I have in my eyes some pieces of plastic which allow me to see uh, artificial crystallines. However, uh, I cannot focus at every distance, so I need to place the computer at a given distance because there are no devices for uh, looking at a certain distance. So I give you an example of material with a, a improved macro scale properties, because I would like to have a crystalline which once squeezed changes its optical properties. And this is an example, a typical example of meta material uh, we are looking for. Of course, this uh, miracle uh, crystalline is coupling optical with mechanical properties. Instead, in my research, which I will present here now, we have only mechanical properties which are coupled one with the other. So I will try to explain in the next slides in which sense I said this. So we have architecture materials, okay? So materials with microstructure uh, designed to uh, get the required performances for our materials, okay? And we want specific properties at macro scale with predefined morphological at, uh, structure at micro scale. And the miracle was that additive manufacturing gave us the possibility to transform dreams into engineering practice. Now, consider that uh, additive manufacturing up to now can uh, range between 100 micrometers uh, uh, below, beyond for the length scale. So we can do an architectured uh, microstructure at 100 micrometers for getting at the a level length scale of centimeters and mechanical behavior of uh, interest. Okay, so there are many applications. I have selected only few among a huge uh, literature simply for building a bridge between what I will tell you and what is already available in the literature. I was uh, surprised here on the left, I show you the uh, metamaterial called pentamode metamaterial invented by uh, Graham and Milton uh, and Cherkayev uh, from United States. Uh, Cherkayev is from uh, Russia, of course. This material has the very nice property of behaving uh, like a fluid in the regime of small deformations. So the constitutive linearized constitutive equations for this solid object, if you write uh, linearized equations, 
is that it cannot exert shear. So you have only pressure-like uh, stress. Uh, this is a material having uh, a negative Poisson ratio. These are materials, this one is the cell and this is a family of cells. You have internal resonators, so uh, you have some apparent effects of negative mass in some, in some situations. These are honeycomb microstructure. This is uh, what we will discuss a little bit more, pantographic uh, microstructures in which you have elongations with very small or zero deformation energy associated. This is another metamaterial designed by Graham and Milton. Uh, you know, these bars are changing direction when you change the deformation of the material and floppy modes, that is deformations with zero energy uh, uh, are varying with the configuration. So you have families of floppy modes in, in nonlinear regimes and these are similar uh, microstructures invented. You know, you have all pivots here in the connection points so that this microstructure, you see from here to there, uh, you get a change of volume controlled by uh, some deformations. Uh, you have chiral, uh, chiral metamaterials, origami. It is, you have an origami here, and here you have a very strange pseudo-pantographic structure with internal motions so that you have this kind of deformations starting from this uh, cellular uh, microstructure. And we also discovered some uh, organic uh, molecules having this strange behavior that you pull this point here and you have a contraction of the blue point. So you pull and as a response, you have a contraction. So this is very, very interesting. And here you have microstructures in which the uh, speed of propagation depends on the uh, uh, direction. And these are pantographic structures we will discuss in more details. So the principle is that, uh, and here I want to invest a few minutes before running with the slides for giving you an idea. So every microstructure you see here has this peculiarity. Let us focus, for instance, here on this microstructure. You have some points, material points, whose micro behavior you are controlling at macro level. And then you have some other points whose my macro uh, displacement and macro behavior is hidden at macro level. These red points are the reason for which the blue points behave in a strange way, apparently strange way. The, the reason is that some points are considered in the homogenization procedure and other points are not. So at macro level, the uh, apparent exotic behavior uh, is related to this circumstance. You follow at macro level and the behavior of the system at macro level is dictated by some points. Uh, which you are following, and other points cause interactions between the points in the interior. However, these red points are not apparent at macro level. So, uh, here I, I will start giving you an example. This is an example of homogenization which we performed for getting a Timoshenko like. A beam model. So at micro level, you have this cell, which is made of uh, bars uh, and springs and internal pivots. The macro kinematics is only the position of the center of these bars and the angle of this bar between a given direction in space, while hidden 
in the micro level having an effect at macro level but not uh, showing it at the kinematics of the macro level you have these four angles uh, which dictates the deformation energy the deformation therefore the deformation energy of these elastic uh, connections between the two rigid bars whose kinematics we are looking we are controlling and you have an internal spring which is spending the formed and storing energy when the angle between this bar and this internal bar is changing okay now i will not i don't cannot i don't want to go inside the details but with some geometry and here are all the uh, calculations considering calling epsilon this distance so the dimension of this uh, cell you make some asymptotic expansions and at the end you find the expression of the total the total energy okay just for telling you at the micro level you treat this as a standard beam whose energy is given by this integral but then when you know the position of pi and this angle you know the position of i a i and d i therefore you can express all the energies at micro level this is the expression of the energy you have some external uh, forces applied uh, in the points which are moving and you have uh, boundary conditions to be imposed and after some manipulations you get that for the energy you have this expression in terms of theta which is the angle which we want to keep at macro level the position of the bars at micro level okay and phi's which are the angles which will disappear after homogenization okay then you consider the uh, deformation energy of each rotational spring and you find the kinetic energy of this structure with the velocity of pi and the angular velocity theta point uh, theta dot square and using piola like identification so imagining to have continuous fields placement angle and internal angles uh, whose uh, values in the points in the reference configuration give you the discrete parameters of the discrete system uh, you have uh, introduced neglecting higher order terms at the end you make some calculations and you find this continuum energy now consider that in this energy you have no derivatives of the fields phi a phi d phi b and phi c so what you can do you can minimize keeping the other parameters blocked you can minimize this energy and you can find phi's in terms of the uh, displacement transverse displacement uh, sorry this is elongation displacement and theta the angle uh, which tell, gives you the, the the orientation of of the bars so you get this continuous energy and this continuous energy if you assume that you have a placement uh, whose tangent vector has the direction theta and whose elongation is given by w prime this is a, a second gradient energy and uh, in which you have also elongation so the standard the derivative uh, the derivative of uh, elongation and so at the end you get a novel model a novel model uh, of beam at the continuum level and these plots but i must run quickly on this prove you that 
when you have enough number of cells, the continuum model and the discrete model give you a very, uh, uh, a very good agreement. So this is uh, the, the, uh, a result of uh, efficacy of the continuum model in this, in this case. Okay, so this is an example. Uh, okay, here we even invented a beam in which you have wooden uh, part of the structure, an elastic part, a metallic part, but I mean, this was rather a game. In any case, you see, we made simulations with the discrete model and the continuum model, and we have a total agreement between the continuum model and the discrete model in, in all cases which we have uh, studied. Okay, and uh, th these are eigen frequencies, eigen values, uh, eigen modes, and here you have eigen frequencies agreement. Okay, so this is for proving that this model is effective in describing uh, in, in allowing us to introduce for a given microstructure uh, an efficient Timoshenko-like beam model. However, since many years now, we wanted to study a system uh, which is elongated with a very low energy. So the idea was, now I, tell, I invest three more minutes for telling you the basic idea of these technicalities. The idea is the following. Uh, in Euler beam theory, we know that we have the second derivative in the linearized uh, theory. You have the second derivative of transverse displacement, which appears in the energy. However, uh, we are not accustomed to a beam where the second derivative of uh, displacement in the axial direction gives you an energy. And this pantographic microstructure, if you block only this point, gives you an example of elongation if in the red and blue points you have a totally uh, perfect uh, zero energy uh, pivots so they can rotate without storing any energy this elongation does not cause any uh, deformation energy so we uh, with Pierre Sepecher in 2004 we have proven even a rigorous uh, theorem uh, proving that uh, when you have uh, this microstructure, the homogenized via gamma convergence, the homogenized energy depends on the second derivative of axial displacement. So you have a complete second gradient beam theory because you have bending and you have extension and both bending and extension give you a dependence of energy on second derivatives of displacement. So you can build an array of beams, pantographic beams like that, then you add pantographic beams in the trunk. Okay, and this is the uh, family of uh, floppy modes, which mean zero energy uh, deformations for this microstructure if the pivots here are all perfect. Okay, so we needed to attack the problem of homogenizing uh, one pantographic beam in order to get the equations of, of, of this pantographic sheet. So we decided to follow only at macro level the central points, so the central pivots, those which here are blue points, 
and we decided to represent the energy of this structure assuming that the red points which are here attain equilibrium when the positions of the blue points are known so the geometry of this microstructure is the one specified here you assume to know where pi minus one pi and pi plus one are located and you calculate all these angles and the positions of these points assuming that they minimize the deformation energy now in order to make this intermediate step uh, we need to introduce a meso model so here we have micro model which is the theory of cauchy with beams interconnected by pivots then we introduce a hanky type model with springs here interconnected by rotational and extensional springs then with this geometry and a lot of nightmare calculations we get this homogenized energy i try to explain you the meaning of this energy of the symbols and something about the meaning of this energy so theta is this angle look theta i is this angle theta i plus one is this angle so theta is the angle of the bar theta i is the angle between pi minus one and pi i mean the segment between pi minus one and pi has an angle theta with the horizontal so theta uh, is theta prime gives you the uh, curvature and theta gives you the in the continuum limit the tangent to the curve homogenizing pi rho is the elongation of the segment between pi minus one and pi okay and kappas are stiffnesses of these springs suitably rescaled in the continuum limit so what you get you get uh, euler bending stiffness uh, uh, bending and the stiffness depends on the elongation in this strongly non-linear way and you have the elongation rho prime and you have a coefficient a stiffness which also depends on rho so remark that you have a very strange behavior very exotic when this pandographic fork is closed so when this point is overlapped to this point rho square is a, exactly equal to two in our geometry so it becomes zero the stiffness at bending but infinity the elongation stiffness so this structure becomes a cable which is inextensible be careful not inextensible which cannot have a non-uniform extension rho prime has to be equal to zero so you have a very exotic behavior uh, of course you may declare that all these calculations are uh, wrong so that what we did we developed a discrete model with these springs uh, here we added some springs in the perfect pivots because we wanted also to do some experiments and you know it is rather difficult to get perfect uh, pivots and we made numerical discrete numerical simulations and you can see that the uh, these are the displacements in the horizontal direction as a function of you know, this is the shape of the beam okay dots are the positions of pi's modeled found with this discrete model 
And even if this energy has been found heuristically, we have no theorems of convergence, anything. However, in all numerical simulations which we have performed, the continuum model uh, gives a total agreement with the, um, the discrete model is totally in agreement with the uh, continuum, continuous model uh, described. Uh, of course, you need many cells for getting convergence, but already with 41 cells, you get a rather uh, efficient uh, description. Okay. Okay, now, uh, uh, it was a nightmare to include kinetic energy in this scheme because of the distributed mass in the bars. I think I have no time, so I will skip the technical details. However, uh, the, the uh, kinetic energy depends on theta dot and phi dot and u dot, and theta is this complicated expression of transverse and axial derivatives of displacement. So you get a very complicated uh, expression for kinetic energy. However, you can find that the uh, uh, wave dispersion, flexural wave dispersion relations uh, are uh, strongly influenced by this term of added term here, J of these theta dot phi dot uh, terms. So these are the regularized dispersion. Uh, by the way, the relationship between uh, wave number and frequency depends on the amplitude. So you, we have a strongly nonlinear relationship. If you consider only the naive guess for kinetic energy, you get completely wrong, uh, wrong results. Okay, so cut in this way the pantographic structure, consider the energy of the beams vertical and horizontal, homogenize and you get a, an energy for B pantographic sheet in which the derivative of elongations along this direction and that direction, vertical and horizontal directions, appear. So you have a plate model in which you have, I will do, in which you have a plate model in which both uh, the uh, transverse second derivatives and in plane second derivatives appear. Of course, you don't have the rho alpha deri derivative with respect to beta. So you don't have a complete uh, second gradient model, but uh, my friend Victor already helped us in proving nice theorems about uh, linearized version of this energy with lacking higher order derivatives. So we are optimistic about the capacity of proving some theorems about this energy. So here I will simply show some nice experiments which completely agree with our numerical simulations. Sorry? Victor. So we, 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 uh, I will show you uh, these experiments. And you know, we managed to print perfect pivots. This is the design of perfect pivots in our structure. So uh, th these are pictures of this uh, microstructure in every uh, respect. And I want to conclude showing you nice experiments. This has been done in Berlin. Uh, where you pull on this side, in blue you see the numerical simulations, and in white you see the picture, and we did some digital image correlation, and we could prove with a clever method, I, I will want to describe you before ending, that uh, the second gradient model 
which I have shown you here, completely agrees with experiments and the discrete simulations obtained by using this method model. Now, how did we compare? You know, here in this drawing, you have uh, green triangles, red crosses, and blue circles. So you have the experiments, the discrete model, the continuum model, and they all agree uh, very carefully in this, uh, in, in, for these measurements. So how did manage Francois Hild from Ecole Nationale, Ecole Nationale Supérieure Paris-Saclay to get for these large deformations a perfect image digital image correlation and this is a very strong attack towards those who believe that you can do experiments without knowing a theory he built a code for digital image correlation based on the theoretical guess of the shape in large deformations so he was calculating the deformation of the bipandographic structure. Then he was looking around the calculated position, the speckle pattern, which is using for digital image correlation. And in this way, he did manage to find very nice uh, agreement between experiments and theory. You know, uh, St. Petersburg is very nice. But this is the picture out of the window of my mother's house, where I am now. So I miss a little bit St. Petersburg. But as Frederick II said uh, when he was excommunicated, you know, uh, they asked him, Are you not afraid to go to hell? And he said, I don't need paradise, I was born in it. Okay, thanks a lot for your patience and forgive me again for my okay. losing. Thank you very much, Francesca. Of course, we are out. We are out of time, but we are so out of time, so we have time for questions. Okay, thanks a lot. We yeah. have times, probably half an hour, so I think you can ask questions if you have. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry. Yeah, uh, by please. the way, uh, did you record this uh, presentation? Yes. Uh, uh, please, if you have uh, a link, let me know. So in, in my website, I will give the link towards this. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll try to send you a link, but it will be after IPM. Don't worry. Uh, uh, it is enough you don't forget. That's okay. enough. Thanks a lot. Well, people, uh, questions, please. May I ask? Yeah. Uh, hi, Francesco. Hi. Uh, my question is about the Poisson ratios in uh, pantographic materials. Uh, uh, can you comment some, uh, a little look, bit? Look, the, the, uh, the Poisson ratio is rather uh, meaningless. I, I explain you in, in which sense. Uh, you know, when you uh, define Poisson, Poisson ratio means uh, a coefficient in the isotropic deformation energy for first gradient materials. Okay, so uh, uh, here we have a frame uh, where the energy is uh, this animal here. Mm -hmm. Okay for perfect pivots or if you don't have perfect pivots you have this correction uh, place here which is governing the change of angles okay so uh, uh, of course uh, let us consider this uh, elongation test so one could say that Poisson effect is this loss uh, of thickness however Boundary conditions here are influencing in a terrible way this loss 
of uh, uh, section. Why? Because here we have blocked all points. If these points are allowed to move, you can get that this block is purely elongated. This point goes here, this point goes here, and it remains a rectangle with zero energy. So you can have uh, every uh, Poisson effect uh, with a very low energy. So in this context, Poisson effect uh, is strongly influenced by boundary conditions. Okay. Uh, uh, look, uh, as we have, we are so late that we have a lot of time. Uh, you will allow me to talk a little bit about epistemological uh, change of paradigm or paradigm, if we want to use the Greek uh, word. You know, these Americans say paradigm because they are barbarians. Okay. Now, the, the question is, the true concept of Poisson effect loses completely any meaning in a generalized concept if you don't specify many more uh, physical uh, boundary data or mechanical properties. So the, uh, what we learned, you give Lame coefficients. You calculate uh, Young modulus and Poisson coefficient. Then you use Saint Venant solution with traction, and you have Poisson effect. All this has a meaning in the context of first gradient isotropic Saint Venant problems. Okay, now here you have a totally distinct paradigm. You have materials, you know, this is even worse than the other one, but look, these deformations are all with zero energy. And if you don't block all these points on the boundary, you can take this specimen, you can have it with, uh, I'm sorry, I, I am behaving as you could see my fingers on the screen. So imagine to have these points, you move this in this direction, elongating, and then you compress the other beam, you get another rectangle with totally zero energy. Yeah, exactly, I agree. So uh, let me tell you another thing. In ancient times, every engineer was studying rational mechanics, uh, the concept, basic concept of rational mechanics. Then he was applying them in mechanics applied to machines, strength of materials, structural mechanics. So one was aware that you can have degrees of freedom of your Lagrangian system then if you block all degrees of freedom, you get a structure, which is deforming. Otherwise, you have a machine. Now, what happens with this pantographic structure? At micro level, it is a machine. At macro level, it is a material. If you block, if you block enough points to kill the microscopic degrees of freedom. Okay, but inside here, the degrees of freedom remain. So you can have a big elongation and these deformations without problems. So at macro level, you need equations and energy, which is enough uh, sophisticated to describe what is happening at micro level. And for a pantographic beam, this, I think, this is the energy which you get. Okay? So it is a change, you know, it is like trying to explain 
to a blind man what is red. You know, you, you need to build uh, some eyes capable to see colors. So we must change, to enter metamaterials, you must change point of view. Okay. Okay. Um, I must confess, I cannot listen to Francesca until the end of ages. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we do not have so much time. Maybe, okay. Uh, are there maybe uh, one or two questions more? And, uh... Elena Grekova got a question. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Francesca, for your very interesting lecture. Ciao. Nice to hear you. I I wonder, well, I have two questions, but this depends on Alexander if he lets me to ask both. So the first question is, we consider, let's consider this material uh, on the continuum level. Then we have a very complex point body which has internal degrees of freedom and also has his uh, own eigenfrequencies, uh, uh, like a black box with some eigenfrequencies uh, or maybe a series of agent frequencies inside. And then when you, when you plot uh, your dispersion curves, uh, where are these agent frequencies? Can we see them uh, like uh, some points which, uh, for example, maybe they correspond to the, to the maximum of the dispersion curve or maybe they are somewhere else? Okay, uh, Elena, as as usual, your questions are, uh, require a, a, a complicated answer. Okay, I was not uh, showing you the linearized uh, wave uh, dispersion formula. As I told you before, uh, first of all, this material we have not studied yet uh, dynamically. So uh, this I'm offering you to, to uh, help us in this. But you know, I have shown you these uh, dispersion formulas where they are, but they are in the nonlinear regime. Yes. So, so you have a free, uh, an amplitude dependence uh, where they are, I'm trying to find them. So, you know, I tell you a secret now, uh, it will be public. Uh, we are trying to find solitary waves inside these materials. So let me see. see. So uh, your analysis uh, is possible. Uh, I don't know. I've shown you some frequency dispersion formulas and now I don't manage to find them. Okay. No, I'm yes. sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I, 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 here. So the, the, the idea is no. that the, the, eigen, the eigen frequencies analysis uh, requires uh, a complicated uh, framework. Here it is, here it is. Okay, so we yes. studied flexural wave dispersions, but they, you know, B are the amplitudes. So when you have yes. a very small B, you are in the linear regime. Then when B is five, you get this, and when B is 10, you get that. And with, micro inertia you get this shape and with macro without micro inertia you get a very different uh, scheme so you know these are non-linear dispersion formulas uh, with victor and mef we studied the linearized equations for a very particular pantographic structure so i think that what you are asking us now can be done but to be honest, we did not up to now. And also we did not study the uh, dynamics of this pandographic structure. I'm not showing you the kinetic energy yet. I only sh I've shown you the deformation energy. Okay. Very, very, very interesting deformation energy, which, which seems to be heteromodular actually. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is uh, probably it will be difficult to study waves uh, because uh, heteromodular theories are very complex. And my second question Rena, is... Uh, if, if, if this is short, okay? Because yes. we have other people yes. who, who have questions, I see. Uh, uh, okay, Please. then, well, it Please. just... 
there are some some deformations which don't uh, cause any uh, any um, internal stresses in the medium so there must be some equation equilibrium equations like for for shells, the six equilibrium equations on the level of stresses. Mm, uh, do you have them? Yes, you calculate the first variation of these and you get Euler-Lagrange equations. Uh, this has been done in a general frame and we did it uh, also in this particular case. So we, we, uh, we, we can find equilibrium conditions in strong form also for this. Look, I will, I will send you a paper. Maybe we can Skype and I will tell you the details. Okay? Yeah. Ciao, ciao, Elena. Okay, I see Christina Pavluska, yes? Uh, yes. Hi. Okay. Well, it is possible. Oh. Good afternoon to everyone. Hi. Uh, yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys, Christine. how are you? And, very, very nice talk, Francesco. Francesco, I don't know whether you remember, you have been, Norman Flagg in Montreal, one of the ICTAM, he was speaking about very similar materials. And actually the story goes back, which Igor Berlinski probably uh, is connected somewhere, or could be connected, to 2001. We have looked at something, we would call it as the oscillator, when we basically look at the a uh, very simple model of the shallow bridge, and that basically had uh, all the non uh, geometrical non nonlinearity. I was asking my colleague, who was postdoc at the time, Chinje Sao, a big professor now in Harvard Institute of Technology, to do what you have done it. You basically propagate that and produce the structure. Actually, so so what is really happening? Uh, you you basically are benefiting from the local nonlinearities of your basically structure, and you 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 can model the the behavior of this metal material as as you basically want. Did you? I didn't listen to your talk. Did you include some sort of irregularities and imperfections to to your to your model? Uh, look, I uh, we are considering systems in which uh, all cells are equal. Well, that, 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 is, that, that could be a serious problem, basically, because the, uh, if you introduce the imperfections, some of the, the uh, incredible behavior friend. could go away. Basically. Uh, yes, so. uh, my dear friend, yes. You, you want a sensitivity analysis, right? Yeah, I, what I would like to see, I would like to see that you basically produce the cell and this cell are not exactly the same, but have a little bit of, of differences in, 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 in properties. And then I give you, I give yeah. you two answers, which are uh, working one helping the other. First of all, this has been printed in Warsaw, and uh, with a printer which has been paid by European Union. Let us say that sometimes European Union is doing very nice things. They are obliged to work <laughs> with other Europeans, so they have chosen us. And the precision of this structure is less than 0 0.05 millimeters. So they are one equal to the other with this error. And uh, you can see here that the, uh, you know, how delicate is the printing of this. Uh, we made pictures at different levels. And the Francois Hild uh, digital image correlation proves that the theoretical uh, uh, green and blue uh, are in a good agreement with the experimental red. Of course, this is not perfectly symmetric with that, but the error is small enough to keep the, the behavior. Okay, this is the first answer. Uh, 3D printing is good enough to uh, keep to produce specimens which are 
uh, very uh, efficient. However, we studied also what happens if one cell is broken. And of course, I had no time. Uh, uh, Alexander, next time, please invite the organizer of the conference to give me two hours and I will show everything. But in any case, I invite you, ev I invite everybody in Arpino and we we'll have one week for discussing this in whole detail. We are very happy to have this kind of conferences. Okay, so what happens? Uh, my dear friend, of course, it is difficult to tell you something which I have not fully understood. I will try to tell you what happens. If one of these cells are broken, the others have helping. So that you have a local perturbation of this deformation scheme, but globally, the behavior is the same. Uh, and we have proven this with uh, body Boris Desmora in Paris, Jussier, on a theoretical basis. So this microstructure does not lose its macro properties due to small defects. I, uh, Francesco, thank you very much. I think I understand you, where, you, where you are. What I would say, uh, kind of warning with a pinch of salt, what you are saying, some of your behavior could not be basically disturbed by that, but there will be some very, very delicate, basically, behavior that will be de definitely de basically disturbed by, by the irregularity. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I agree totally, but the yeah. apparent stiffness, yeah. the apparent stiffness is not. This is something I, I, can I have to run for another meeting, virtual, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I, I believe thank you very much. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you very Bye. much, Francesco, for a very interesting talk. I really enjoy it. Marian, See just, you soon. See yes, you soon. I hope so. I hope uh, in, 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 in real life. In real life, yes. Okay. And I believe that two, Francesca, I believe that two hours is not enough. No. <laughs> okay, three hours, three hours. Okay, yeah, okay people, I, I think if uh, there are no very hot questions, let us stop this session because it was very interesting. It was very impressed, ec excited, impressive. And uh, Francesca, you were in this room when I'm sitting now. I hope to see you again here. The yes, same table. Yeah. Le let's hope that coronavirus will leave us yeah, yeah. Alive. Thank you very much.